Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. Sam does not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. Then he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. He checks out that horrible sound he's hearing. Not the horrible, the source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise. The Grim Reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on Sam. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude! Your soul be like a diamond! Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. For reals? Aight, man, it decided. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. <laughs> If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay. But for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Hello there, dear sir. He keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the gatekeeper of hell. Whenever that's going to be. Hehe. <laughs> I, bro, I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now. Sam has just traveled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive, and more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, yeah, you look horrible. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. Oh, cool. You be alive. Everything be fine. All right, so this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kind of have to do stuff on purpose. Um, you be turning kind of blue. Might want to consider breathing.
bitching. You be blinking and breathing, that be bitching. So, all right. Go survive for a day, and I'll let you live normally for the rest of your life. If you somehow die within the next 24 hours, you'll go to hell and I'll keep your shreds forever. I'll be over there doing kick flips if in you need me. Once again, Sam has to make an effort to get up. This time, he has to focus on his spine. And once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. Oh. Sam tries out a strange maneuver by stepping with the same leg twice. Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. With clean teeth, Sam is ready to smile. He won't for at least 24 hours, though. Your spine, Sam! It matters! Sam tries to take a leak. Sam's vision is blurrier than a Norwegian teenager at a wedding. He decides to blink. Sam takes a leak everywhere, including, but not limited to, himself. Sam takes a leak on the towels. One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. <gasps> Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam is clean as a whistle. Good job, Sam. <gasps> clean and empty, Sam decides to find some clues. He has to use his opposite leg to get up again. Right, let's see here. Sam can open doors now. Clever boy. Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? He picks a pair of blue jeans. The ugly ones. Sam successfully puts on his pants. Feeling more accomplished than ever, he proceeds to find a jacket. Only the best one will do. Blink, Sam! Blink! Fully clothed, Sam is ready for the day. P.S. He's not. <gasps> blink, Sam, blink! 
You're impressing no one, Sam. He puts on his shoes, living the dream of having shoes on. Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. Flappy Rooster is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a Flappy Rooster right now, though. Following the story at this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... N hey, Lucy! I'm home! Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. Blink, Sam! Blink! Sam finishes his food like the big boy he is. Good job, Sam. <gasps> oh. Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip. With some coffee in his system, Sam finds it easier to exist. Oh. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, stupid. I am totally gonna kick flip over your car. <laughs> Ow! Dang! Oh man, that hurt. <gasps> Dude, it was like that when I got there. You might want to get that hood fixed. It, it be loose. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just get in the car. You know. <laughs> 